All right, we are going to get started in a minute or so. We're going to let people, uh, give people a chance to pop in. I think I have to get this going on Instagram Live in a second. I have to do this separately. Uh, so let's get going on Instagram. So we are live now on Instagram, on Twitch, on Twitter, or I guess X. I don't think I'll ever get used to calling it X, but YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, we are live. So we'll get started in just a second. So CP, normally when I get started, I like to, I like to share wins from the past week. Now these can be so new wins, these can be personal wins. It could be big, could be small, it doesn't really matter. But what what did you get accomplished in the past week that you feel like helped, you know, keep some momentum going? I mean, it's, it's more of a more of a personal one, but um I, I managed to wash my car this weekend. Uh, the sun was out in London. Felt like the first day of spring and my mood <laughs> was just instantly so much, so much better. So a little, little personal win. Nice. And some people might hear that and be like, you know, that not understand that win. But I lived in London for about a year and a half. So seeing the sun is a win. Not having to wear long sleeve or a jacket is a win. So I think everybody's mood does turn around when the sun comes sure. out. At least that's what I sense. So definitely, definitely a win. I'm trying to think what I got accomplished in the past week. Uh, so some people know that in addition to my role at Two Loss, I also manage a comedian. We have a web series, a new web series that's premiering at the end of this month. And we found a venue to do our live premiere here in LA. Uh, we're still looking for venues in New York and Atlanta, but we locked, well, it's not locked in yet. We found a nice venue in LA. So that was definitely a win for sure. Um, and then at Two Lost, I feel like we do things on a weekly basis so that as long as we are knocking those things out, those are wins, right? Like we did Two Lost office hours last week. Um, you know, we kept up with our socials. We're always creating a lot of content. So I see we have Chris Amos in the building. Chris, Chris has been a, a regular attendee. We appreciate you showing up, Chris. Hopefully these are valuable. You actually have my number. So if there are something that we can add to these sessions to make them better for our audience, please let me know. We always want to make these valuable because I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my guest time. Uh, but let me introduce my guest for today. It's going to be another great conversation. Um, so so new stream people may not be familiar with. That's why we're having the session. Uh, but CP, let people know your role at Sony Stream. So I am a and R and artist partnerships lead, and I have the best job in the world because I get to go through all the catalog that gets sent our way, have a listen, find out some really cool artists, partner with them, um, and on a wider scale, just try and make artists more money. Um, that's the bottom line essentially of what we're doing and i'm playing a key role in actually making that happen so I'm, I'm super grateful for that trying to make artists more money i think artists would love to hear that and definitely want to learn exactly how that uh how that works on the platform now is it appropriate to because i know that initially it was sona stream and then sona now it's so new uh do you just call it so new should i be calling it so new stream how, what's the proper Whatever makes you happy. I, I don't think there's a there's a there's a proper there's a proper way to refer to us. As long as Sony's in there, then then we're chill. Cool, cool. So, do you know? And then, how long has Sony Stream been uh, in existence? When did it initially launch? Uh, so that was back in, I believe, 2022. I joined the team a year ago, but um, yeah, it's been bubbling away for a, for a little while now, and we're we're just coming to market. So it's been a, a long time coming. Okay, awesome. And and just to let people know, we are partnered with Sony Stream. If you distribute your music via Two Loss, your music is already on the platform. This is music going forward. This doesn't mean your back catalog is on the platform correctly. This is just kind of music. If you distributed, since we've had this partnership, all of that music going forward should also be on Sony Stream. As long as you selected, um, I guess you would have to deselect it for it not to be in, in, in Sony Streams catalog. So a lot of our two lost users are already on the platform, whether you know it or not. And that's part of why we're having this conversation. So initially, why did Sony Stream even come into existence? Obviously there's a lot of DSPs, a lot of streaming platforms. Like why did you guys feel like there was room for another one 
Um, and how are you going to carve out a lane that was a little different? Okay, so we've got two co-founders. We've got Laura and we've got Toki Monster. Um, and Laura's mum is uh, an activist and a musician back in Puerto Rico. And um, she's really cool, uh, but she's not mainstream. And when you're not mainstream and you're not going by the rules necessarily of, of what the music industry is, it's hard to make a living. Um, so Laura came up with this idea of just harnessing a really core cool community um, and leveraging that to be able to essentially get a fair streaming rate and be able to like live and make music at the same time. Um, then you've got Toki on the other side of the spectrum, who's a Grammy nominated artist, DJ, very successful. Um, and the two of them met on a flight and Laura explained her, her ideas to Toki and Toki realized this would also work for me. So you've got two people on very opposite sides of the spectrum. Um, if it works for Laura's mum and it could work for someone like Toki, then why can't it work for everyone else in the middle too? Um, so whether you're, you're just starting out and distributing music yourself just as a hobby, or if you're running through two lost, um, or like you're, you're on a major label, just whatever your situation is, we've come up with a model that does work for everybody. Um, and the, the way that the platform works is just by partaking in the ecosystem, you're not just helping yourself out, you're helping everybody else in the ecosystem out too. So it's a very, very communicate, a very community based way to, to share revenue and um, basically create a new revenue stream for artists. Nice. Now, I know that, you know, through the Web3, you know, crypto, I think a lot of services didn't work out because it's very difficult sometimes to explain to the masses like what it what is going on. Right. So how can we how can we easily explain kind of what happens on Sonu Stream and how artists uh, can take advantage of the platform? Yeah, to touch on the Web3 aspects, I, I don't think that's 100 percent necessary in our case because we're, we're very much a web to traditional dsp on the front but all the crypto and the back end stuff is, that's done like behind the scenes like if you just want to come and listen to music for free without any adverts or subscriptions you can do that it's just if you want to start partaking in the marketplace and and purchasing these digital twins that's when you need to start um start touching on the crypto side um at the moment, you, you can purchase songs through auction with ETH, um, but we are working on the back end to make this possible with a, with a credit card too. So even if you're not particularly familiar with Web3, you will be able to partake in the marketplace on a more Web2 friendly side of things. Got you. So unlike other traditional DSPs, there are a few different ways to make money on the platform, right? Can, can we talk mm -hmm. about that? There's three ways, right? You have kind of your traditional per stream, like royalty rate, you have the opportunity to sell um, each song as you guys didn't use the word NFT with me when we spoke before. And I don't know if that's a, it's appropriate to say, but you can kind of sell like these one off um, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to use NFTs. And then there's this third component. Once artists claim their profile, right? they get to participate in some of the revenue that gets generated from transactions on the platform. And I, am I, am I correct in those kind of three yeah. buckets? Um, yeah. So I, I, I tend to explain it to artists as like a, a three-step plan with what we're doing. So like you said, first layer, you just get a pro rata, um, traditional mechanical royalties payout as you would for Spotify, Apple music or, or the like. And then step two is what you actually explained in step three where you activate your music on the platform. This will come into play when we've got our artist dashboard set up within the next month or so, uh, where you activate your tracks. So you're streaming off of our protocol instead of via our DDEX partner. Um, and you're eligible to pull 100% of the rewards that you're eligible for from our reward pool. This is paid out on a pro rata basis. So however much traffic you're driving, um, how, like, how, how many times your song is being streamed, out of the entire pool, that's what you'll be eligible for. And then the third stage is the auctions where you're able to share these rewards with a fan, collector, investor, whoever wants to come in and be a part of your journey. Um, and then in that case, a fan, collector, whoever, gives you some upfront liquidity via our auction mechanism, and they collect 70% of the rewards that someone would be eligible for. The artist will always keep 30%, but you get that upfront liquidity to go market your next project, pay for studio time, whatever you need to do, pay the bills, that money's there for you to, to do whatever with, but your collectors then incentivize to give you that money because they'll be sharing the, the rewards of you from that point onwards, only from within our platform. We're not asking artists to give up royalties from Spotify or other DSPs. We're a totally enclosed ecosystem. So 
whatever's being earned on the platform, that's what then gets split. Got you. And as I'm going through the, as I'm typically, we, we ask for uh, questions at the end of these conversations for people that maybe don't catch some of this. If you have a question, just put it in the comment section. So if you're on YouTube or I believe LinkedIn um, or Twitter, your comments will be, uh, I'll be able to see those Instagram. I'll have to toggle back and forth. So I'll try to catch some of the Instagram comments, but if you have any questions, while we're having this conversation, let's answer them along the way so that people don't kind of get, get lost and aren't understanding something while we're advancing the conversation. Um, so what is, from your perspective or from your role, like what has been like some of the bigger challenges for you guys over there? Um, I think getting catalog is obviously a very big part of things. Um, we're very lucky that we're working with Two Lost to, to get all these great tracks through but you've, you've got Spotify with 90 or so million tracks and everyone's so used to having all of those tracks available at the push of a button. So right. we're, we're working out at the moment just to get different deals with distributors, just make sure that anybody that lands on the platform can listen to whatever they want um, because then ideally that brings them into the marketplace where they can then participate in the ecosystem and share these rewards out with everybody. Yeah, so that's probably like the, so that's your guys' number one problem, just making sure artists are aware and getting catalog into the system. Yeah, because the, the more artists that we have on the platform, the more opportunities there will be to generate this additional revenue, which, like I said, goes towards everybody that's partaking in the ecosystem. Got you. So what is your suggestion for an artist that may be just learning about Sonu today? Uh, what is your suggestion kind of first item, at, first action item if they go to the site? Like what, what should they be doing? I'd say create an account, check the platform out, um, have a have a listen through the catalog that we do have available. Um, we're, I think we're close to 10 million tracks on, on the platform at the moment. And of course, all the two lost catalog is there. Um, create some playlists. We, we don't have an algorithm. We do we do some uh, editorial playlists, but we're, we're not pushing that as heavily as some other platforms do. Um, there have been plenty of two lost artists appearing in the playlist that I've been making. Um, but one, one thing that we're, we're trying to push forward in the future as well is curators really having like a stake in the platform um, in terms of like they'll also be eligible to, to pull revenue from the rewards pool. Um, it, we want to go back to the days where you were giving somebody a CD and like check this out because there's not too much of that these days. And back when I was younger, that's how I found the really cool stuff. Um, and if you're driving streams, then you should also be eligible to, to earn the rewards from that. Got you. So in, in terms of where the, the platform is now, like, are there some additional things in the very near future that will be added that people may not see today? Like what's next on kind of the, the tech roadmap? So we've just signed a partnership. I can't say too much about it. Um, if, if Laura was here, she, she, she might be able to, but I, I'm not in a position to say, um, okay. but it, essentially we're, we're looking to, to track streams from, all of the DSPs that uh, a user listens to um, and that will go towards reward pool payouts um, where artists, even if they're not on the platform, um, any rewards that they'd be eligible for, they stay locked up, earns interest and then when they're ready to activate, they can come over to the platform and then, then pull their rewards out. It's just an extra incentive to get involved. Um, we're also looking at adding ticket sales, adding a merch store. Um, but at the moment, it's just the, the marketplace is the first layer. But yeah, we've got, we've got plenty on the roadmap. Got you. So it, it's going to be more more full service, basically a platform where artists can even unlock additional monetization options in the very in the very near future. Um, in, in your role, where did you come over from before the role that you sit in now? So I've been a producer engineer for the last. 10 or so years. I started when I was 16 in a very small studio and then went into a, a bigger studio in London and slowly worked my way up from people just recording stuff for their grandparents to the likes of Coldplay, Rihanna, Taylor Swift. Um, so as someone that's, that's seen artists from the very start of their career to someone that's like already made it, I, I, as my personally, I can clearly see that artists aren't getting paid enough. And as a, a very wanting to help person, once I connected with the, the Sony team, I realized that our visions were pretty aligned and it, it was a bit of a no-brainer to come out and, and help out with the, with the cause. Gotcha. So you had already had a decent amount of experience with artists 
Um, is there anything that has surprised you since you've been working with, with Sony? Um, honestly, after a decade in the music industry, I don't think many things surprise me anymore. Um, you've probably found this yourself. Um, but what, one thing that did shock me is just that there are, there are so many opportunities to make life better for artists and there aren't many people really going after those opportunities. So to be part of a team that, that is trying to make a change, I, I think that's really positive. Awesome. Is that, do you guys already have like a case study that you can point to that? Cause for me, when I hear of a case study in terms of how somebody did something, the impact, like it really drives home kind of what the opportunity is. Are there some early case studies that you might be able to share with us um, so that people, you know, they probably have a good understanding of, of you know, what, what we just ex explained and, and described, but it, are there some case studies you can share with us? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the, the very first auction we started off with was with Toki, one of our co-founders. Um, she auctioned off um, Loon from Loon Rouge, um, which is a Grammy nominated album. Um, and I, I think that that went for just under 5k at auction. And then straight after that, we went into a, a smaller artist called Manu Dia. Uh, he's based in Europe, electronic, very, very cool artist. I definitely recommend checking him out. Um, and his auction settled for, I think, just around $1,500 and to somebody that's not part of a but not had like an extremely successful career he's still very much early days he, he turned around to us was like this is going to pay for my next single my next album but he genuinely appreciated having this extra opportunity to to make fifteen hundred dollars that he can then push into studio time and reinvest in himself and he's not had to give up any rights for from outside our platform like i said it's a totally enclosed ecosystem this just was a, an, another totally new way for him to make money without sacrificing anything else. Gotcha. So, so for folks that may have just tuned in or maybe even further clarification for the people that heard it the first time. So these, these Sony, you call them Sony's, right? Like the one of the one of ones. Um, so the Sony, so every song, is it every project is like, could I do a, a, a Sony for a, a, a whole album or is it for every song? There's a, it's just a track by track basis. Right. Okay. So for every song that you guys put on the platform, you have the opportunity to auction off a one of one Sony. So for every song, whether you just made the song or maybe you can do it for back catalog, like that's what he's referring to that got auctioned off um, and, and sold for, I guess the first one was 5,000 with Toki. And I, I can't remember the name of the second artist with it, that got 1,500. Um, but I would imagine they obviously Toby has a pretty big fan base. The second artist, where were they at in their career where they were able to 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 generate fifteen hundred from one sale? As I've managed very, very early days. He's had a, an album out and an EP, he's had a couple of couple of placements, but in, in terms of contrast to Toki's career, he's still very, very much early days. Got you. So what did what did they do? in order to kind of drive interest to educate their artists to you know because there's going to be some level of educating your community of like what exactly this even is and then to generate excitement and interest to participate in the auction and to drive it up to a dollar amount that's meaningful like you know fifteen hundred dollars that's that's a that's a good amount of money for an artist that doesn't have much traction um you know did they do something specific to to drive up interest um, I, I think that the biggest thing that we're finding with artists is just educating their audience on the fact that artists should be getting paid more and there is an opportunity to come and stream their music on an artist friendly platform. So we're all very much artist based people. Um, and yeah, just if, if artists can convey to their to their fan base that if you give up Spotify for a month, come try us out. Sure, we might not have all the catalog, but the artist that you want to support is actually getting paid fairly. And then once they're in the marketplace and they know that tracks are being streamed, the one of ones then have more value because they'd be earning more more from the reward pool. Um, so yeah, just bring them over. Just let them know that the people they want to support will be getting paid more, um, and it's it's not affecting their their outcome, their other other sources of income. Um, just just take a chance and actually believe in the artists and give give a bit of respect back because the these days streaming is completely devalued artists, and what we're trying to do is actually give some of that value back and, and bring it back to the olden days. So, so the auction of the one of one, that's, that's the one bucket, the, 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 I'm, and I'm kind of going back cause I know people have come in. So there's three ways to monetize currently 
on the platform. The auctioning off of the one of one is one bucket. The, the bucket that's more similar to a royalty rate that you would receive on Spotify in terms of, is it, is it about the same amount like per stream? Or I'm sure these calculations are very complex, but is it similar in, in the amount per stream as other DSPs or how do you guys calculate that? Uh, the layer one, I think is comparable with Spotify. Um, it's just when you go step two and beyond, that's where you unlock a higher pay per stream. Yeah. So that's the second bucket. The, the third bucket where you get, you get, you get to participate in some of the uh, revenue that's generated from transactions on the site. Is there anything that an individual artist can do to in, influence that number? Or is that just kind of like, you know, kind of a passive, as long as, long as the platform's doing well, it's generating more transactions. So that bucket becomes bigger. And is that like distributed just on a market share basis? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's pro rata for how much they're driving per month in terms of stream and just people to the platform. Um, there, there is one thing that we're looking to add uh, that I, I should have mentioned earlier is a, a direct tipping the pool function or being able to tip an artist directly. You, you pay 10.99 a month for Spotify and you know that that money's not going to the artist that you're listening to. So to be yeah. able to actually give some money directly to an artist that you directly want to support, we're going to be adding that opportunity. Or if you want to tip the pool, then you can tip the reward pool separately. And then that gets split amongst everybody that is eligible and participating in the ecosystem. Got it. So there'll even be a fourth bucket soon is, is the tipping that's completely separate. Yeah. Um, so Life Masters on YouTube asks how they come up with the 70 percent profit split. Um, and we might need to remind them where that 70 percent, because I, I think I was this question was asked 15 minutes ago and I just now pulled it up. So I think we were talking about the one of ones. What we, was that what, where the 70 percent came from? Yeah, so when you auction something off, 70% um, of the rewards generated goes to the collector, whoever's giving you that upfront liquidity, 30% to the artist. Um, but in, in terms of how we came up with the 70% split, um, there's just a lot of research that was done not long after the company was started. Um, I'm personally pushing to be able to change this number or just make it adjustable. So if an artist only wants to give away 5%, obviously there'd be a lower liquidity amount coming to them in the first place. Um, but they do keep the majority of the rewards themselves. Um, but the idea behind it was that a collector should be really incentivized to come and participate in the auction. And 70% and definitely seemed like the right number for that. So let's, again, because I know that people might, might, I can see how, you know, people might start getting confused. So for the people that purchase the one of one, they're now entitled to 70% of which which revenue bucket the this the the normal royalty rate or is it from the transaction bucket or what which which 70 percent is is the person that purchased the one of one now entitled to so they'll be eligible for 70 percent of whatever that song is eligible, eligible for from the reward pool so that's based off of how much it's been streamed on the platform anything to do with tipping that just goes directly to the artist got it so but Again, just kind of going back to our original three buckets, you have the one of one kind of the regular royalty and then just kind of the, the transactional pool is the 70 percent from the regular royalty and the transactional pool or is it just the transactional pool? Uh, the royalty and the transaction pool are the same thing. Um, okay. the, 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 the first step, the, the royalty pool, that's paid from our company revenue. Um, that's a totally separate thing that artists don't even need to worry about. That's just from a certain amount of the company's revenue. Um, step two and three that's all uh, that all comes from the transactions that happen on the site okay so hopefully hopefully folks understand that if you need a follow-up question just put your question in uh the comment section you can whether you're on youtube or twitch or twitter um i'll have to let me pop over to instagram and see if anybody has any questions there that i can i can't throw them up on the screen from instagram but we definitely uh because sometimes I neglect our Instagram audience because it's a little bit more difficult to see their comments. But um, let's see, we have another question. I've already distributed a song through Two Loss. How do we get it added to Sonu now? So if, so if the song was distributed prior to our partnership, how do artists get those songs onto Sonu? 
Um, as far as I'm aware, we should have it. Um, I, I think any catalogue that's come from, well, it's been released through Two Lost, that should be with us. I mean, I've been listening to, to tracks back from 2019, so we should have it all. Oh, so then I misspoke when I when I said that to begin with. I was under the impression that once we started the partnership, every song after that that was uploaded via Two Lost um, would be in Sony. But we even the back catalog, if distributed via Two Lost, should be there as well. Yeah, we should have everything. What if artists have songs that weren't distributed by Two Lost? How do they get those into the platform? Um, I mean, we're slowly going through all the distributors um, at the moment, but if there is a case where you urgently want to get your music on that's not with a distributor that, um, that we've dealt with, then you can upload to us directly. We'd primarily like to work with the distributors just because in terms of getting money back out to the artist, it's far easier to go through the distributors. Um, but you can also let your distributor know that you want your music on our platform and so to reach out to them and say, you should be working with Sony because they pay artists fairly and I want my catalogue on there that's also a very good route to go down but if in the meantime you desperately want to get something on just reach out to hello at sona.stream and we can we can work together to get the music onto the platform got you so i was on the app last night i was listening to black dave black dave is a, a he's a pretty pretty uh influential person especially in that like the crypto space and, and nft i think that's how, how i came across and we've had some pretty pretty cool conversations his music is dope um uh, so I, I thought the user experience was solid from a from a fan perspective. Like, what are some of the ideas that you got to have going forward that might outside of telling fans like, hey, this platform is dope because it compensates the, the artists better. Like, what are some other things that we can kind of tell fans to encourage them to, to listen to music on, on Sony? Um, there's some, some features that I've been discussing with the team over the last month or so. Um, I really want fans to feel invested in the platform, like you've just been describing. So if you could go to an artist play, an artist page and see who their top streamers are, so mm. say for whatever reason we had Taylor Swift on the platform and you were her number one listener on the platform, you're going to be right at the top of our page along with anyone that's collected her Sonys. Um, and then people that also listen to her know that you're also a massive fan. They're going to go check out your profile. There's a, there's a really good chance for, for people to build build a following just from what they're listening to on our platform. Um, but also going back to the auctions, um, if you do collect something, then it will be featured right at the top of the artist page with their top collect with their top listeners. Um, if you go onto a song page, it will say who it's collected by. Um, we, we want the fans to to definitely feel invested and in, almost as if they've got some sort of social responsibility to be curating playlists or to be pushing their favorite tracks. Nice, nice, nice. We got another question from Mad District. How does this work for labels? I noticed the artist can claim a profile. How about the labels? Um, if a label has entirely gone through Two Lost or another distributor that we work with, um, our artist dashboard will also have a label section where if you look after a certain amount of artists, you can log in via that um, and just, just yeah keep maintenance and all of those accounts in one go. Um, but at the moment, we're, we're definitely pushing for the, the sole artist dashboard to, to be going first, but that is definitely coming. Mm. Okay, cool. I'm just curious, since you guys, I mean, obviously, as a, as a young company, typically there are not only challenges, but things you have to pivot through. Are there, are there any pivots that you guys have had to make, uh, maybe just given that the, when you guys started, it was probably like, you know, right in the height of crypto and NFTs being introduced, a lot of excitement. And then some of the excitement kind of crashed when, you know, crypto crashed. Like, have you guys had to pivot and, and change kind of the business model? What, is, what has been some of the, the roller coaster ride of experiences um, that, you, that you're able um, to share? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the crypto market in itself is a, a very funny thing. And yeah, it's great when it's up, but when it's down, it's, yeah. They, they call it a bear market for a reason, put it that way. Um, but the, at the end of the day, the, the love for music has remained the same. That's that's never going to go away. So while the interest might not necessarily be there for, for purchasing NFTs, not that we're calling them that, um, people still want to listen to music. And because of certain conversations that are happening at the moment, thank you, James Blake, um, people are realizing that artists do need to be getting paid fairly. And we're just another way for artists to earn money and actually be treated fairly and a platform that actually makes it about the artist 
Um, and I think once people tap into that, I think we're going to be onto a winner. Yeah. One of, when, when NFTs were kind of, you know, being talked about a lot, one of the benefits of the NFT was being able to kind of resell them in a secondary market. Um, is that the same thing? You, you can do that with a, with a Sony? Can you do that on the platform? Like how, to, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. It can, it can definitely be resold. So say that you've already made back the money that you invested through the rewards. Um, you can sell it at any time. Um, 7% will always come back to the platform. Um, 2% to the company, 5% going back into the reward pool uh, to be redistributed amongst, amongst everybody. Um, but yeah, we're, we're not limited in terms of resale. You can do that on a secondary site like OpenSea, but we're also like building it into the, into the actual platform itself. So you can just do it directly on our marketplace too. I'm going to put the, um, I should have put the, the, uh, website in the banner, but I'm going to put it at least in the, in the chat. It's, is it Sony dot stream? That gets you there, right? Boom. Um, app dot Sony dot stream. I'm sorry. Say that again. It'll be app dot Sony dot stream. Okay. Now to the website. Oh, but I put that in. I put it in, and it went. It took me to the website without the app. But oh, you want the web, yeah web, website would just be uh, Sony dot stream. Yeah, if you want to check out the app, that will be app dot Sony dot stream. Got you. I did just use it on my desktop last night. I haven't checked out the app yet. What is the? What would be the difference between the two different user experiences outside of obviously just being an app? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not an iOS app. It's a, it's a progressive web app where you'd go onto Chrome or Safari and you save it to your save it to your homepage. So it will appear as a normal app, but it's, it's very much optimized for a mobile experience. Um, yeah, I, I'd say definitely check that out over desktop if you get the chance. Got you. Okay, so maybe I was limiting my, my experience on the platform last night when I was messing around with it. Um, so definitely if you're an artist that has, well, whether you're an artist that has distributed through two loss or not, I would definitely check out the website, um, claim your profile so that you can get access to additional revenue. Um, what are other best practices for, for artists on the platform? Um, I'd say if you, if you know that your music's already on the platform and you want to start getting involved in the auction mechanism that we've got, I'd say email hello at sona.stream. So keeping our old email there um, and then just reach out and then we'll get the conversation going, see if we can get you into our, into our schedule. It's very much a, a white glove experience at the moment where we're running two auctions a week. Um, so we're working very closely with artists to, um, to make this happen. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to get some more of your artists into, into the schedule. Awesome. What was the email? I'm going to put that in the chat as well. Thank you. It'd be um, hello at sona.stream. Hello at sonu. I'd be sona. With an a. Oh, so no. Okay. Do you, do you want to talk about like how, why are, why the name changed so that people kind of have, so if people see it, it's like, if people still see Sona stream, it's the same company, but you guys had to pivot with the name. Um, yeah. So we're, we're, we're still, um, Sona technologies legally. Um, but yeah, we were originally, uh, Sona dot stream, but songwriters of North America, um, had some conversations and a former dormant streaming company reached out. So uh, we played it safe and we, we switched to Sony for the time being. Got you. Let's see. We got Graham that asked, do I need to sign up as the fully independent section as an artist? If I use two lost, you might know um, that no, more than as a, you, you won't need to do that. Um, just make sure that your music's appearing on the platform. And then once our artist dashboard's ready to go, um, We'll let the lovely folks at Two Lost know um, that, that the time has come to actually come and claim your profile. And then, yeah, the artist dashboard will be your, your port of call for, for setting up your own auctions or just changing your profile, editing your images and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that, that'll be coming very, very soon. And then for the fans, it's it's free to stream. Like, like obviously, I just hopped in there and started streaming streaming music. Um, so there is there is there a paid tier? Will there be a paid tier in the future? Um, you know, I guess Pokemon, um, people will, will hear that and be like, well, how do you guys make money? Um, yeah, well, the, the, the streaming the streaming's paid for by the marketplace and the transactions. Um, so we're, we're using the 1% of people that want to collect and invest in artists to help the 99% other people stream for free. Um, as, as far as I'm aware, there, there won't be a, a pay tier. It's, it's free for all. Um, 
Um, yeah, there, there's no ads, no subscriptions. Like I said, the, the marketplace pays for the streaming. Um, yeah, I think that covers it. We are only um, streamable in the US at the moment. I've just seen a question about Canada. Uh, we are working with with other territories at the moment, but that's, that's something that we're going to uh, look, look spread out through um, over the rest of the year. Got you. See, Grandma. So what do we do for now as artists? What do you mean? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. That was probably a follow up. Um, I- yeah, I'd, I'd say until until you can log into the dashboard, just just make sure that your music's there and streaming. If there's anything that you want changed immediately in terms of images or bios, then reach out to that hello at sona.stream email and we can change everything for you on the back end until the dashboard's live. Um, but start letting your fans know that your music's available to stream over here, that you will be getting paid fairly. Um, just, yeah, like I said, start, start putting some respect back to the artist because over the last God knows how many years, it's definitely declined um, and we want to bring that back. Yeah. Um, all right. So again, if you have questions, we're coming to the end of this session. If you have questions, just type them in the comment section. So whether you're on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitch or Twitter, uh, just go ahead and type your questions in the comment section. If you need anything clarified, or if you have an additional question, we are happy to answer it for you right now, uh, for the artists that are listening, uh, just make sure you claim your profile, go to Sony or Sona.stream uh and just check it out just check it out you know there's a lot of stores and services out there so we want to highlight some of the ones that people may not be that people may not be familiar with um since sony has only been around you said 2002 right i mean 2022 right that's what you said yeah yeah Yeah. so i'm just just looking just looking in your chat um graham's asking we can't get paid until we have access to the dashboard if you want to get if you want to get an auction going reach out to hello at sony.stream um and we can we can get that going for you um that'd be a way to essentially jump the queue in terms of the artist dashboard getting ready um yeah we can we can make something work for you cool cool let me hop over to instagram and see if see if some folks have asked any questions uh just comments 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 okay cool any let's see gyra says how many i'm not even sure what a mau is i feel stupid should i what is in what is an mau i'm in the same boat let me have a quick google <laughs> do you guys see on sonu um yeah i'm not even familiar with it's just users i guess oh, okay yeah we, we've just come out of our our, our beta um I, I can't give you an exact figure but it's, it's still very early days for us um but that, that's why we want to be talking to artists, letting them know that we're doing something different. And if they bring their fans over, then there's an opportunity for everyone to be treated a bit more fairly and actually earn a, earn a living from, from making music. Got it. Monthly active users. I probably should have been able to figure that out. My bad. Jira. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel slow today. I feel slow. Um, cool. So is there anything that we haven't covered that you feel like you know people should be aware of? about the platform um, i don't think so if, if yeah if, if you want to learn more check out the website um if you want to get a, an auction on the go jump the queue for the dashboard reach out to the uh, to the email that, that you put into the chat um yeah start start listening to music on there start creating some playlists let your fans know that the music's over there um, and if you've got any questions reach out to that email and we'll do whatever we can to help yeah i mean i think ultimately these conversations are super healthy I want artists to be educated on all the opportunities that are out there so they can figure out how to best set up their business, what to lean into. Um, You know, you want to be aware of all monetization options because I think, you know, for super successful artists, they may be able to collect money from a few different sources and be okay. But from an independent perspective, it's typically kind of like you got to collect everywhere, right? And piece everything together so that you can have a sustainable business, especially in the beginning, you know, so you want to be able to do sync licensing and collect your Spotify and your Apple and your MLC and your, uh, your pub admin. So you want to know about all of these different opportunities for you to, to, for you to monetize your music um, so that you can start to build some revenue and invest back into your business, grow your business, um, you know, so I think these conversations are, are, are super healthy. Um, and then where, so what it, can you tell the, tell our audience, like 
where uh, Sonu is on socials. Uh, what the I'll put the uh, ads at, on on Instagram. You guys are at so is it Sonu dot stream yeah and then twitter's the same but with an underscore i believe let me right. double check on that uh, yeah i don't is. run the socials <laughs> yeah it is, it is because i i think i tagged you guys earlier and then yeah i believe we've got a linkedin page as well if that's your flavor um yeah. but we, we've got we've got a discord as well actually um there's a there's a, a budding uh, producer community bubbling away in there so if you want to come check that out all the relevant links are on our website be be, be nice to, to see a few of you in there too yeah, I would definitely, you know, claim your profile on their platform, you know, check it out, get familiar with the platform. I will follow them on social media so that you can be kind of up to speed on all the the, the new uh, features that get rolled out in the in the in the coming um, in the coming months. Uh, what else? Do you guys have a newsletter? Do you guys send out a newsletter at all or? Yeah, so there's there's a weekly newsletter that goes out um, there's a there's a playlist attached to it as well called Rewire plenty of two lost artists appear in that every week so yeah sign up for that you, there's an option to sign up when you sign up to the app um so make sure you tick that box and you, you might see your track coming through on that that playlist every week yeah you know some people might look at where the platform is and you know i think a lot of times independent artists they're only looking for like huge like grand slams right they don't value those opportunities to connect with their first five hardcore fans, their first 10 hardcore fans, their first 20. I mean, you got to establish those early relationships to even get to the bigger numbers, right? So even if you use Sony Stream to connect with, you know, your your super, super duper fans and start building that community, that's super valuable. Um, so wherever you connect with them, however you connect with them, you got to you got to start there. Um, a lot of folks are trying to skip steps and just hit a grand slam before you even play t-ball. Um, there's no way you're, you're going to be able to hit a pitch from Shohei Otani, at, you know, the first time you step into the box. So uh, maybe I should have used a football reference for my folks over in London. Um, yeah. Anyway, you guys get it. You got You got to connect with people. You got to build your community. Um, and I think Sony is a, is a great opportunity to do that with some of the things that they're building for you guys to take advantage of. So I'll wait another second or two to see if any other additional questions come in um, in that time. CP, uh, I don't know, do you, are you on socials as well? Do you put yourself out there like that? Or are you just like, nah, I don't, I don't do the I'm, I'm pretty under the radar, man. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a behind the scenes guy. So even me stepping in front of the camera today is a, a very rare occasion, but it's been nice to, to chat to everyone. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk about Sony with you. Well, well, we definitely appreciate uh, you joining us and sharing information. Um, again, make sure you guys check out the platform. Uh, he, we put the email address if you guys have questions. Hello at sonus.stream. Um, and then, yeah, this has been another great Two Lost Office Hour session next week off top i don't even know who's on the schedule but i'm sure it'll be another dope conversation and maybe in the future we can have you back to kind of give us some updates on more wins more features more artists that are on the platform uh, that'll be pretty dope maybe we do that you know later this year or so something like that Definitely done. cool cool all right y'all appreciate you tuning in this has been another episode of two lost office hours if you have any suggestions for us whether that's companies you want us to bring on or uh, topics you want us to cover, let us know. We'll take that into consideration as we're planning out our schedule. Until then, uh, hope everybody has a great week. Lock in some wins. Make sure you share your wins for Share Your Wins Wednesday. Uh, and that's it. Talk to you soon. Peace.